The next thing we are going to look for is a mediastinal shift. Now, again, I was trained as a radiologist, so I'm mainly concentrating on finding lateral mediastinal shifts, but there are other mediastinal shifts as well. So here we have spine, descending aorta, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium. Again, we said we identified the left atrium because of its proximity to the descending thoracic aorta. If the lake left atrium is not proximate to the descending thoracic aorta, then something has pushed the heart anteriorly. We also said that the right ventricle isn't exactly right. It's more anterior than right. And in that sentence, I expect that the right atrium will touch the anterior chest wall. I'm sorry, the right ventricle will touch the anterior chest wall. If it does not, something pushed the heart backward. So here we have spine, descending aorta, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium. Quite obviously, uh, there's a gap between the aorta and the left atrium because of the presence of this uh, rather formidable mass. Here in this transaxial scan of the fetal thorax, uh, you can see the left ventricle and the right ventricle anterior wall. Here is the anterior chest wall, and clearly the anterior wall of the right ventricle is not in contact with the anterior chest wall because it is being pushed posteriorly by this, again, a rather formidable mass. Spine, descending aorta, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium. It is not until we recognize that the left atrium and the descending thoracic aorta are separated that we actually have a fighting chance to recognize this small sequestration that has interposed itself between the aorta and the left atrium causing an anterior mediastinal shift. <clears throat> As I said, we mostly concentrate on lateral mediastinal shifts. And in this circumstance, I mentally draw the mid-sagittal plane to look at the position of the heart. Now again, the canting of the heart into the left hemithorax causes us some problems again, because you can see that only the right atrium is predominantly in the right hemithorax. The entirety of the left ventricle, nearly all of the left atrium, and nearly all of the right ventricle are in the left hemithorax. Here we have three examples. Here we draw our mid-sagittal line, and we can see a large mediastinal shift. <clears throat> The heart does not even contact the mid-sagittal line. Here we've drawn our mid-sagittal line, and we can see that only the tip of the left ventricle is in the left hemithorax. The entirety of the right ventricle, right atrium, most of the left ventricle, and nearly all of the left atrium are in the right hemithorax, a moderate mediastinal shift. In this case, we draw our mid-sagittal plane, and we can appreciate that the entirety of the right ventricle is in the left hemithorax, so a minimal mediastinal shift. This type of mediastinal shift can't be recognized unless you consistently draw the mid-sagittal plane. You don't have to actually draw the line, just mentally draw the line to see the position of the cardiac chambers relative to the mid-sagittal plane. 